Hello, my name is Josh Harvey and today we're going to talk about blood flow. Now the human organism has an estimated 100 trillion cells that must go on exchanging materials with the external environment just to stay alive. This exchange is made possible by a circulatory system that includes a muscular pump, which is your heart, an exchange fluid, which is of course your blood, and a network of pipes, which are called, of course, blood vessels. Each day, the human heart pumps about 8,000 liters of blood through a vascular network that stretches more than 60,000 miles. That's more than twice the circumference of the Earth. Shock, of course, is a clinical syndrome that is life-threatening. In fact, it's the one thing that everybody dies from. Shock means inadequate tissue perfusion. This lecture, of course, is about blood flow, and that's what I'm talking about, inadequate blood flow. We have an imbalance between our cellular oxygen supply and demand. Our red blood cells, of course, carry the oxygen throughout the body, and we're interested in getting oxygen to every cell in the body, and that includes the cells clear down in your big toe. Now the stroke output of your heart is the principal determinant of circulatory blood flow. The forces that govern cardiac stroke output are preload, contractility, and afterload. Preload is the load imposed on a resting muscle that stretches the muscle to a new length. Contractility is the velocity of muscle contraction when muscle load is fixed. And then afterload is the total load that must be moved by a muscle when it contracts. Now before you totally freak out, because these are very complicated terms, we're going to talk about preload, contractility, and afterload in a little bit more detail. So don't totally freak out with these words. What is preload? Well, preload is the stretch of the rubber band. You can see here a little guy with a slingshot. Preload is the rubber band that is stretching. Afterload is the weight of the stone in the actual slingshot. The Frank Starling relationship of the heart says that in the normal heart, the diastolic volume is the principal force that governs the strength of ventricular contraction. The diastolic volume provides the pressure that is a reflection of the passive stretch imposed on the ventricle at the end of diastole. The end diastolic volume of the ventricles is the preload force of the intact heart. It's pretty complicated stuff. Sounds very confusing. What I hope to do today is break it down a little bit so that it makes some sense. What in the world is preload? And what in the world is afterload? very confusing. Basically, preload means the filling pressures. Your CVP, central venous pressure, is the filling pressures of the right side of the heart, and your wedge is essentially the filling pressure for the left. I'm going to talk to you about how the heart is like a toilet sometimes the toilet starts to back up. Have you ever had that happen where you're in the restroom and the toilet starts to back up and you get a panicked look in your eyes and you're searching frantically for a plunger? Something to keep that toilet from overflowing. In the heart, the low pressure side is your right side of your heart. Your high pressure side is the left side of your heart. Now preload really is the heart's filling pressure 
And as your heart muscle stretches, the stretch increases contractility. It's much like this balloon that you see in the picture here. As the balloon stretches, your heart muscle stretches, it's going to increase your contractility, how much force your heart muscle can contract with. Now, too much preload usually won't cause your heart to pop like this balloon is doing, but there does come a point when it's not helping either. So, preload is the blood returning to fill up the heart. We measure preload with CVP or your wedge pressure. Your CVP is your right side of your heart. Your wedge is the pressure, the filling pressure in the left side of your heart. Contractility really is talking about how hard the heart is beating. We call that word inotrope or inotropy. Afterload is really the force that the beating heart has to push against. And we measure that with systemic vascular resistance or pulmonary vascular resistance. So, preload is the force that acts to augment the force of muscle contraction. What does augment mean? It just means increases or improves the force of muscular contraction. Contractility really is the difference between diastolic and systolic pressures and we call this pulse pressure. Pulse pressure is a reflection of the strength of ventricular contraction. Now for test purposes, and I teach these concepts for the CCRN exam or the CEN exam, for test purposes, as I'm struggling with a really difficult question, I like to think of contractility as cardiac output. Cardiac index is probably a little more accurate version of cardiac output, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But really, the test writers are trying to make you think about a decreased contractility if they give you a cardiac index of less than two. So you have a difficult test question, and in the test question it says that your cardiac index is less than two. We're really talking about decreased contractility. Now, afterload, another very confusing concept. It's difficult to explain what the difference is between preload and afterload. And there's a couple reasons for that, and I'll explain those reasons. But basically, preload helps the heart muscle contract, whereas afterload opposes muscle contraction. As the afterload increases, the muscles must develop more tension to move the load. So in the intact heart, the afterload force is equivalent to the peak tension developed across the walls of the ventricles during systole. So in the intact heart, the afterload force is equivalent to the peak tension. Think about a weightlifter who's weightlifting a tremendous amount of weight. Maybe he's bench pressing or something like that. You can see that in this slide here. In the corner, there's some soldiers over in Iraq who are working out. They're weightlifting. The afterload force is similar to the peak tension developed across the walls of the ventricles. The ventricles are just a big, thick muscle during systole. Systole means muscular contraction versus diastole, which is the resting phase of the heart. 